Hello guys, it's Lee here. Hope you're having a great day. Um, so in today's video, I'm going to be sharing um, a few little bits with you. Uh, recently, in one of my previous videos, you would have seen I actually done a uh, CPU upgrade from a Core 2 Duo to a Xeon uh, 5450, I think it was, uh, off the top of my head. So that was a uh, Socket 775 uh, original processor that was replaced with the Xeon processor, which was actually for a Socket 771. So there's a slight modification to do there. And that machine has actually been running pretty well. Um, however, the actual um, CPU has been running really hot. Um, there's a couple of things I think that are actually causing it. Uh, one is the thermal paste that was actually used wasn't a very good um, quality thermal paste. Um, two, the actual uh, heat sink and fan was actually a stock replacement, so the same uh, heat sink was from the Core Tube Duo, so not the best uh, one uh, for it. I mean, like I say, it's just in a regular uh, Intel stock fan there. And thirdly, was when I was actually refitting the heat sink. Um, I couldn't get all four uh, footings down into the actual motherboard correctly. Um, in the end, I, I think I sort of worked it out, but I still wasn't 100% confident that all four um, fixings were secured in place. So I think that's the other sort of issue. So there's kind of three issues. Um, what that actually means is that that CPU is running really hot. And I'm um, just looking at the, uh, the actual machine to the next, uh, to the side of me here. Um, and it's on, the load is at like 25% and the CPU is up to like 90 degrees. So it's very very hot indeed. Um, the actual ambient room temperature is also really hot and the case is hot. I've got um, some GPU, a GPU in there as well um, so that's all exacerbating the problem. Um, so in this video what I'm actually going to be doing is replacing um, the heatsink and fan that's in there with a new heatsink or actually one of, an old heatsink and fan from a previous uh, machine of mine. Um, so what I've got is this, um, this one here which is a stock uh, Intel cooler. Um, and this is actually from my i7-950 uh, um, but I'm pretty sure the footing or the the actual fixing configuration is the same I will have to double check that but also this one has a copper core and I'm pretty sure the other one that's in there at the moment I think it's just an all aluminium block so hopefully this should um, help um, with that um, in addition to that I've got some uh, thermal compound this is Phobia HE Grease um, and it's had like really good reviews and stuff online. I uh, read it on a few different forums and a few uh, online sources and this is supposed to be really good so I'll be giving this a try for the first time and then yeah hopefully with the combination of a slightly better heatsink and some good thermal paste um, hopefully that should help us keep this uh, processor a little bit cooler. So what I'm going to do now is uh, get the actual machine up on the desk and then um, I'll go through that actual process with you. Okay, so I thought I'd actually be able to use this um, stock cooler from the uh, Intel 950, but it's actually slightly larger. So that's unfortunately not going to work. So I guess we'll just check with the uh, new thermal paste and see how that goes.
Okay guys, so we've managed to get the uh, heatsink refitted. Um, that was actually much harder work than it should have been. Uh, part of the problem was, was these um, on the stock Intel fans, they just have this uh, pop and uh, locker kind of uh, configuration. And the problem that I was having is when I was actually inserting this piece, which is actually normally at this kind of angle, when I was actually locking it into the actual uh, motherboard, um, what's supposed to happen is then this pin then comes back through and um, so pushes these. It's difficult to uh, kind of uh, show you on the camera, but it basically spreads these kind of clips and then it locks into the actual motherboard. The problem that I was having is, as you would just see in that little video, is that when it was actually locking into the motherboard, it wasn't quite uh, fixing at the bottom, so then it just pop in the heatsink that was coming loose. So that was a real pain, and it's just because these, I think the poppers are just a little bit worn, um, where I've had it in now a few times um, over the years. So that really, that whole uh, heatsink really needs to be uh, replaced to be honest, and I'll probably do that at some point. Um, but we got there in the end, um, it probably wasn't the best um, ideal sort of situation for it, so obviously always uh, easier to replace the uh, CPU heatsinks um, once they're actually out of the machine. You know, when you're um, doing the initial build that's always easier than, than after the fact when you're trying to get into the case and stuff like that, that's always um, really tough. The other thing is it's like crazy hot in this actual office so when you're actually trying to work and it's um, a little bit hot it makes it um, difficult but got there in the end so what I've actually done is um, I've just leaving the machine running now and um, hopefully that will give it about 10 minutes or so to uh, warm up it shouldn't really take that long in this particular heat and then we'll see whether we've got any improvements I think really I'm not really expecting a dramatic improvement just because the actual um, the office is so hot and the actual the entire case is so hot as well and there's really not adequate cooling it's only got the tiny um, 40 or 50 mil fans inside there and it's just really not effective uh, for it so we're just kind of working with what we've got here and trying to make the best of the, uh, the situation okay so I've just moved the camera around just so you can see my desktop as I see it um, apologies for the quality I know it won't be so great just uh, you know recording directly off the screen but just so you can see the actual basics um, so at the moment the actual uh, machine is just kind of uh, idling you see the actual load is uh, just 1% or thereabouts it just jumped up a little touch there and the temperatures um, across the board are much uh, lower still pretty hot relatively but much lower than it was and we we're sort of touching uh, 90s earlier idle um, so yeah it's not quite uh, quite a bit of the temperature off what I'm going to do as well is um, I, because of the way the uh, the machine was running so hot before I couldn't even actually put the CPU under any sort of um, serious load because the CPU would just throttle um, because it's getting too hot um, at one point it even touched 100 degrees which is um, ridiculous um, but now if I just put it under load um, you see the actual temperature should go up also the uh, clock speed is reporting wrong up there um, I did uh, set it in a BIOS it is running at the correct speed but I don't know why a real temp is just um, reporting it wrong there actually if I open it back up we shall um, just want to see if it picks up the correct or if it's still yeah so that was just a, a bug in a real temp so under maximum load we're getting up to 90 on one of the cores and the others are just about 85 thereabouts so it's still pretty hot but it's uh, much better than it was okay guys so that just about wraps it up for this video um, this has just been me uh, sort of tinkering about doing bits and pieces that I normally would and uh, capturing it and sharing it with you guys. So the overall objective um, of this video and what I actually wanted to do was to lower the actual CPU temperature on that particular processor and um, we've actually managed to do that one way or the other. It has been um, a little bit of a slog to actually get the job um, done, not perfect sort of or ideal situation or ideal tools and circumstances. You can always make excuses for those things so it hasn't worked that quite yet uh, as planned however the actual CPU is now in a little bit cooler which is what we're really aiming for um, what I think I'll do is um, this uh, Phobia HE Grease it's got really good uh, reviews and recommendations so what I think I'll do is in a future video um, I'll try and um, use this uh, product um, in a more controlled fashion and try and share the best sort of results with you I know at the moment some of my um, graphics cards are running really hot as well so what I might do is um, remove the heat sink off those and just reapply some new fresh uh, thermal paste and see what uh, results we can get that you know, and we'll do that in a bit more of a controlled environment or, or situation and then I'll be able to post those um, results and share that, that experience uh, with you guys so that's it for this video thank you very much for watching um, if you've got any questions or comments as always 
then um, just leave those in the comments box below and I'll be sure to get back to you guys.